The most important thing um, to remember when you're taking Coumadin is to not miss a dose. That's very important. The most important thing about being on warfarin is that you have to be proactive. You have to ask questions and you have to have the answers yourself. It's a little scary, but you have to know the do's and don'ts and follow directions. You're watching this video because you're currently taking a drug called warfarin. Warfarin is the generic name for Coumadin and Gentovin. If you're at risk of getting a blood clot or if you've already had one, this powerful drug can save your life. Although warfarin is safe and effective, it has to be properly monitored. This video will show you how to care for yourself while you're taking warfarin. All right, well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a finger test today. Right. Some people will refer to warfarin as a blood thinner, although it really isn't. Warfarin is actually what we call an anticoagulant, which means it prevents harmful blood clots from developing in your body. Sometimes people have harmful blood clots that we want to prevent from getting bigger, and so we put them on warfarin. Other people, we put on warfarin because we're trying to prevent harmful blood clots from developing. Well, blood's supposed to clot, but you don't want it to clot in your bloodstream. If it does clot in your bloodstream, then it obstructs the flow of blood to your organs. People take warfarin for different reasons. You may be on it because you've had a heart attack, stroke, or a blood clot, also called a deep vein thrombosis or DVT, or an irregular heartbeat. If you've had a heart valve replacement, Warfarin may also prevent a clot from developing around an artificial heart valve. Some people have to take warfarin for the rest of their lives, while others may be on it for only a few months or years. The most important um, and easy way for me to remember to not miss a dose every day is that I leave my prescription uh, medicine by my keys. That way when I'm going out the door, I'll see the bottle and I won't forget to take the medicine. You take warfarin once a day, with or without food. It's best to take it at the same time every day. Some people use a calendar or a pill box to help them remember to take their warfarin. If you forget to take your pill, don't take an extra one to catch up. That could increase your risk for bleeding. What we'd like you to do is just take your regular scheduled dose the following day and notify your provider that you'd missed your dose. Um, by the same token, if you take an extra dose by mistake, just call them again and let them know that you've taken an extra dose of your warfarin. Warfarin comes in many shapes depending on the company that made it. The tablets may be round, square, or oval. The tablets are color-coded based on their strength or how much medicine it contains. Strength, or the dose, is measured in milligrams, and each tablet has a different color. For example, all five milligram tablets are peach, whether they're generic or a name brand. The amount of medicine needed to prevent blood clots varies from person to person and may change over time. So check your tablet color each time you get your prescription refilled. And if it's a different color than you normally get, you should check with your health care provider or clinic as you may be getting a different strength than you normally receive. The only way to know if you're taking the correct dose and if your warfarin is working is to get a blood test done called the International Normalized Ratio, or INR for short. You can't tell if it's working by how you feel, so it's really important that you have your blood tested on a regular interval at least once every four weeks. The INR is used to measure how much time it takes for your blood to clot. The results will tell your provider how much medicine you need and if the dose needs to be changed. You should be tested within one week of starting the medicine or within one week of leaving the hospital. And now our machine is going to calculate your INR. The INR is done by taking blood from your fingertip or from a blood test. The blood is put into a machine and the results show up as a number. Ask your provider what your INR range should be. And your number is 2.5. That's very good. Your goal is 2 to 3. So you're Getting the right dose of warfarin can be very tricky and may require some adjustments to get it just right. It took between six weeks and two months to determine the right combination of warfarin by the provider. I go back now about once a month to have my blood checked. When you start warfarin, it's important for you to arrange for a clinic or a medical provider to test your INR and to manage your dosing. 
So if you're taking too much warfarin, that'll cause your INR number to be too high. And that means that you are at higher risk for having bleeding problems. If you're taking too little warfarin, your INR number will be too low, and so warfarin won't protect you from developing another blood clot. You should tell everyone that you're taking warfarin. In any healthcare setting, make sure that your doctor, your dentist, the nurse, anybody who's writing a prescription knows that you're taking warfarin because of the strong potential for reactions between new drugs and the anticoagulant medication. When I get the gout, I have to call the Coleman Clinic to let them know that I am on a novel prescription drug that will cause the Coleman to interact because my levels will either go high or low. Warfarin can increase your risk of bleeding by itself. There are certain over-the-counter medicines that can also increase your risk of bleeding while you're taking warfarin as well. For example, aspirin is an ingredient in several cough and cold preparations. It's always best to read the label of all over-the-counter medicines. Warfarin also interacts with a number of prescription medications like antibiotics, as well as with herbal products, nutritional supplements, and vitamin products containing vitamin K. It's very important to tell the healthcare provider that's monitoring your warfarin if you start a new medicine, stop one of your medicines, or even if you change the dose of one of your medicines. Warfarin can interact with multiple medicines out there and it's important because it can affect your INR. If you inform your healthcare provider, they will be able to check your INR sooner and possibly adjust your dose if it's needed. I always check with my doctor to make sure that whatever medication is proposed doesn't conflict with warfarin. For example, I'm on two different types of uh, medication for my high blood pressure and I made sure that there wasn't any particular problem with that and I will always do that. Talking to your pharmacist is another way of protecting yourself from dangerous drug interactions while you are taking warfarin. Tell your pharmacist that you're taking warfarin and give that person a list of all the over-the-counter and prescription medicines you take. I learned finally that I have to be consistent in my intake of food, uh, particularly the uh, K uh, vitamin. Some foods, especially dark green leafy vegetables, contain high amounts of vitamin K. Vitamin K helps the blood to clot which means it works against the warfarin and could lower your INR. Spinach, broccoli, cabbage, kale, Brussels sprouts, and collards are all high in vitamin K and may affect how warfarin works in your body. In addition to dark green leafy vegetables, vitamin K is also added to some weight loss products and nutritional supplements, such as SlimFast, Ensure, Boost, and Instant Breakfast. To be safe, be sure you read labels carefully so you know which products to avoid. Your dose of warfarin is based on how much vitamin K you normally have in your diet. Most people think you can't have vitamin K, but you can. What we do is when you start warfarin, we're going to ask you in an average week how many times you have vitamin K with your food. Then what we will do is dose your warfarin to your existing diet. It is important for patients who are taking warfarin to try to eat the same amount of vitamin K containing foods each week. If they eat too much vitamin K during any week, it will make their INR go down and they won't be as protected as they should be. If they eat too little vitamin K during a week, then their INR may go up and they may be at higher risk for bleeding. So trying to keep the diet steady from week to week is very important. When traveling, it's important to try to keep your diet as steady as possible, as close to your diet at home as possible, so that you keep your INR in the normal range where it usually is when you're at home. If you get sick while taking warfarin, it's a good idea to contact your provider to make sure that you shouldn't get an INR test done sooner because sometimes when you get sick, your INR can go up. As far as my diet goes, I'm always afraid of making a mistake. For example, am I eating one too many spears of broccoli? Will that make a difference? I was fortunate that my provider gave me a copy of a list of the items that I had to watch out for, the ones that would be high or low, with vitamin K. What I had to worry about when I first started was the size of the portion. What was a serving and how did I measure it? So there are a couple of ways to simplify life. One way um, to understand is a serving size of a vegetable. 
for cooked is one half cup and then for um, raw vegetable is about one cup. So um, one way to visualize this is that a clenched fist equals to about one cup. And if you open up your, the clenched fist, it gives you about half a cup of uh, cooked vegetable um, serving size. It is also important to measure your intake of certain beverages, such as cranberry and grapefruit juice and alcohol, as they can increase your risk of bleeding. A serving size for a fruit juice is about four ounces or half a cup. You can, again, um, for you to estimate how much that is visually, you can use your fist and kind of gauge it. It's about four ounces or half a cup, correct? And also another way to use is that you can measure it up for the first time, um, how much that is, that's about a, a four ounces, and you can use your regular household cup to kind of pour in to help you gauge again, it's important that you are consistent. Consistency is the important key. If your INR is too high, then sometimes you could bleed internally, and the places that you might bleed could be inside your head, in which case the symptom that you'd experience would be headache or some other neurologic thing, a little bit like having a stroke, if you develop a blood clot, you may notice a sudden increase in swelling, consistent pain, redness, or warmth in your arm or leg. If you have a history of venous thrombosis and are on warfarin, the thing we fear is a condition called pulmonary embolism. Embolism is when a blood clot that forms in one part of the body floats away and then is propelled in the bloodstream into another part. If you feel pain in the chest, often a pain that's made worse by breathing, and you're suddenly more short of breath, then that could be a dangerous warning sign and should be a reason to call your doctor or head to the emergency room. Go to the emergency department if you have other symptoms of major bleeding, such as bright red blood in the toilet after you go to the bathroom, smoky pink or red colored urine, black and sticky stools like tar that may also smell unusually bad, a sudden and extremely painful headache worse than any headache in your life. Or if you briefly black out, can't move, have trouble talking, or become very weak, especially if you're weak on only one side of your face or body. That could be a stroke. Besides the normal signs of clotting and bleeding, there are things you can do to reduce the possibility. The first is to use a soft bristle toothbrush. Secondly, I changed from using a regular razor to an electric razor. To make sure that you try to not be clumsy, try not to fall. If you're going to be outside, be very careful of the tools that you're using. Make sure that you're not cutting yourself. Keep sharp objects away from yourself. Warfarin does make you bruise more easily. If you do bump into something, hold pressure or put ice on the site for two to five minutes. If the bruise is bigger than three inches across, or about the length of your finger, or if it keeps getting bigger, go to the nearest emergency department and tell them you take warfarin. Anyone on warfarin runs the risk of bleeding. If you get hurt and start to bleed, you need to know what things you can handle yourself and when you should go to the emergency department. The most important thing to remember is if you do get a cut, apply um, pressure with your thumb onto the cut for about two to five minutes. If it doesn't stop bleeding, um, you need to contact your doctor as well as go to the emergency room. Some people do have trouble with nosebleeds. A humidifier, a saline nasal spray or gel may help keep the nose moist and prevent bleeding. If you do get a nosebleed, don't hold your head back. Instead, hold your head in a normal upright position. Pinch your nose together just below the bony part and squeeze tightly for two to five minutes. Breathe through your mouth until the bleeding stops. If okay with your provider, you could try a nasal decongestant spray to help stop the bleeding. But if the bleeding doesn't stop after 20 to 30 minutes, we recommend you go straight to the emergency department and tell them that you're taking Warfarin. I do worry about heavy bleeding during my cycle. I tend to have a very heavy cycle, and I worry that the medicine um, may make my bleeding even worse. 
If you're still having menstrual cycles, you don't need to be concerned about your monthly bleeding as long as you're getting your INR checked on a regular basis. Your periods may be a little heavier than normal, but if you have any questions or concern, be sure to ask your medical provider. So while warfarin is safe for most patients, pregnant patients should not take warfarin because it can cause birth defects. In addition, women who are of childbearing age should consider taking a contraceptive agent so they do not become pregnant while taking warfarin. There's a lot to think about when you're on warfarin, but it's really not so hard to manage it safely. Remember to check your INR regularly, inform your provider of any changes in your medicine, eat a consistent amount of foods high in vitamin K, know how to treat minor bleeding, when to go for help, and be sure to talk to your healthcare provider if you have any questions. For more information, go to acclinic at jhmi.edu or www.hopkinsmedicine.org slash hematology slash anticoagulation or call 410-502-8641.